All right, welcome to Forbes Games. Uh, this week, we're going to take a look back in time at the best video games of May. Uh, we're going to look at five different games, four of which are the best games of May, and one is sort of my biggest disappointment of the month. We'll kick things off with one of the most highly anticipated games on next-gen consoles. Uh, this one also came to PC, and uh, let's take a look. Resident Evil Village picks up not long after the events of Resident Evil 7 Biohazard. Players take on the role of Ethan Winters as he's thrust back into yet another horrifying tale of decadence and decay, this time set in a mysterious village and the ominous castle that looms over it. Village is another first-person entry in the long-running Capcom horror series, though its setting evokes one of the franchise's earlier third-person games, Resident Evil 4. Village is certainly frightening enough, and it positively oozes atmosphere. Gamers like this one even more than critics, giving it an overwhelmingly positive score on Steam. Between the game's mysterious and gargantuan villain, Lady Dimitrisk, and its gorgeous graphics, Resident Evil Village is one of May's must-play titles. Almost a decade after the release of Mass Effect 3 and that game's RGB ending controversy, the Mass Effect Legendary Edition brings all three games back to life, with updated graphics, overhauled combat, and a bit more consistency between the menus and gameplay experience of all three games. Mass Effect Legendary Edition reminds us all why we fell in love with these games to begin with. Commander Shepard and the entire crew of the Normandy are characters we want to spend as much time with as possible, whether we're exploring the galaxy or blasting our way out of a gunfight. Bioware's Space Opera remains one of the best video game RPGs ever made, and the Legendary Edition is terrific. Speaking of RPGs, Divinity Original Sin 2 from Larian Studios is one of my favorite turn-based role-playing games out there. It's a smart, witty adventure with a great story and even better gameplay. The game is layered with strategy and tactical elements in every combat scenario. Players can use elements to their advantage. If an enemy is standing in water, use a lightning spell to do extra damage. If some foes set your character on fire, use a rain spell to put out the flames. The iPad port is excellent. The graphics look phenomenal. You can play using touch controls, a gamepad, or even mouse and keyboard. The port comes via developer Elverils, and the studio did a fantastic job bringing the game over to iPad, especially given that this is a PC game at its core. Buyer beware, however, Divinity Original Sin 2 will eat up around 17 gigs of storage space. Days Gone, from Sony's Ben Studio, released with too many bugs and performance issues when it came out on PS4, and it ended up getting the short end of the stick when it came to reviews and commercial success. That's a shame, because it really is a very good zombie apocalypse motorcycle adventure game. Sure, it's a little generic in some ways. No doubt our grizzled protagonist, Deacon St. John's, is a bit par for the course. Then again, he's no more generic than Ethan from Resident Evil Village. The PC port represents the third major PlayStation exclusive to come to PC, after Horizon Zero Dawn and Death Stranding. It's actually an extremely capable port, with a plethora of graphical settings, including support for ultra-wide monitors. The game looks great, with improved lighting and textures, and an easily attainable 60 frames per second, depending on your rig. If you miss this one on PS4, definitely give it a spin on Steam. Finally, we come to May's biggest disappointment. It was a fairly crushing one. Biomutant was supposed to be this exciting, colorful kung fu combat game starring the most adorable little mutant raccoon. It was certainly on my most anticipated lists. Instead, combat in the game feels weightless, suffering as much from bad sound design as anything. Meanwhile, the game's colorful world is depressingly empty, and both its main quests and side quests leave much to be desired. Between the lackluster story, the annoying gibberish that passes as character dialogue, and all the tedious, repetitive gameplay, Biomutant really feels like an unfinished product. A recent patch does improve some of these issues, but the game still drags. It's one of those rare titles that's a lot more fun to watch than it is to actually play. Still, it has potential, and with the right support from THQ Nordic and developer Experiment 101, Biomutant could go from a mixed user score on Steam to something in the realm of positive.
All right, uh, thank you for watching. Those are my picks for May. Uh, there were lots of other games that came out, so if you know of something that, that I missed here, and I'm sure you do, uh, you know, shout out in the comments. Let us know what we should be, uh, what we should be playing and what we might have missed last month. So uh, thank you for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next week.